Hi everyone. Um, my name is Ginny. Uh, I'm originally from Malaysia, as Hasa said, and I'm currently working down south in this uh, neighboring country of us, uh, in this company called Carousel. And um, I'd like to tell you a little bit of a um, story about myself today. So I have this condition since I was very young, called strabismus. So for you, for some of you who are not familiar with what strabismus means, the common word for it is called a squint. So what has this got to do with my talk? Now imagine for a normal person, their eyes look like this, all right? And um, imagine that this is basically the, the view of my eyes looking towards you. My eyes look like this. So my right eye actually turns inwards towards my nose and as a result of it not being treated when I was young, most of the time, my vision is effectively this. So when you have a screen, what happens is your brain basically shuts down the visual input from the misaligned eye in order to prevent double vision and headaches. And because it was never treated and my brain kept suppressing the vision, so over time it just got lazier and lazier and lazier and I ended up with basically lazy eye and I'm losing vision as well. So this means I have no binocular vision. Objects appear in a different spot to me from where they actually are. I used to think as a kid that I had superpowers to move objects. <laughs> and red green 3D glasses to me are just red. And um, about a year ago, I somehow managed to scratch my good eye and I ended up with corneal abrasion on my left eye. So, um, corneal abrasion is basically a scratch on the eye and it's really, really painful and it's really difficult to open your eyes. Pain notwithstanding, but it will also make your eyes really sensitive to light. So this led me to be unable to open my left eye and since my right eye is also funky, this meant that for a whole weekend, my vision was basically this. And suddenly I was blind for an entire weekend. Well, thank goodness for screen readers, such as VoiceOver on Mac or JAWS on Windows, because frankly, if not because of it, I don't know how I would have survived that entire weekend because you know I'm just chronically indebted to the internet. <laughs> but the experience could have been better. So here are some quick tips of how you can adapt your website to play nice with screen readers and improve the experience for the visually impaired. So first, use semantic HTML. If the text is not a header, don't use header text. Style it some other way using CSS instead. This is because a lot of screen readers actually use header text in order to let the users skip through content or quickly skim a page by skipping through all the different headers or header levels. So using it for unintended purposes can actually mess a screen reader experience a little bit. So to give you an example, if you've got um, H1 or H2 elements to style like text, visually style text in between paragraphs, and that text is actually meant to be part of a paragraph, the screen reader will basically read all the paragraph nicely like it's a story, and then it goes heading level three, blah, 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 blah. And then it goes paragraph, and then blah, 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 blah. Right? And if you have headings to um, style a banner, for example, for your page, it goes like heading level one, blah, blah, blah. And then, your, and then your, to your actual heading, it goes heading level one, your title. So that's really weird. Um, you should also take advantage of things like ARIA elements, such as nav or section tags, as well as adding role attributes to key content sections. So modern screen readers provide for an easy way for the users to actually skip across contents using ARIA landmarks. So these actually are ARIA landmarks as well and allow the users to actually... Um, so for example, using VoiceOver, they have this thing called the web rotor where you can basically turn your um, fingers on the trackpad like as if you're turning against an actual mechanical rotor to basically skip through the page landmarks quickly. And if you want to use an element to display something, but it should not contain text, visually hide the text instead. Screen readers can't focus on an empty element, 
So blank text may actually cause the screen reader to skip important contextual elements on your website, even if you can visually see it. And same goes with elements without names or labels. So a, user won't, a screen user won't know what an input field is for unless you also give it an associated label. So for example, if you've got a sign up form, having a first name, having a label first name for a first name input field would cause the screen reader to properly say first name, edit text. Otherwise, it would just say edit text. But what should I put in here? In this example, the screen reader will simply say button, even if you can visually see the word submit. Add the word submit instead so that the screen reader would say submit button. And for this, the screen reader, the screen reader will simply say link, click here. But where does it go? Here, it will say link example.com, much clearer. And make sure you put your alt descriptions in your image text. And omit words like image of, because screen readers will already tell the user that it's an image. So if you've got an alt text that says, cat curled up in a ball looking suspicious, like my cat over here, the screen will actually say, image, cat curled up in a ball looking suspicious. And by the way, screen readers also respect punctuation marks. So you should actually write your alt text properly with punctuation marks. And if you want to do things like um, on hover menus or you know, hover menus and um, fancy things with JavaScript, make sure the underlying HTML elements and the structure of the menu is actually still accessible via the DOM so that the screen readers can focus into it. And be careful if you choose to implement things like infinite scrolling, because imagine this. If a blind user wants to click a link or the, at the, uh, a link at the page footer, all right, or want to see if there's anything at the page footer, but when you scroll down, the page loads more content and then gets longer. So when does the page actually end? Will I ever get to the bottom of the page? So consider a load, um, a load more button or a standard pagination instead. And make sure your links are actually proper link text, not some random HTML that has a click handler on it, all right? And finally, consider fonts and colors that you use in your website. Make sure that there's sufficient contrast. And I challenge you to read this, right? Make sure the size is legible enough. Yes, that's on purpose, by the way. <laughs> Um, and especially on mobile websites, try not to prevent the user from being able to zoom in and out. So um, don't set max uh, zoom on your viewports. And even for fully sighted people, remember that there are also those who are colorblind, roughly 9%, or as um, the first talk in the morning this, this morning said, one in two of males are colorblind. Don't depend solely on colors to deliver context. You might want to consider using um, shapes or text in association with the color. So for example, if you are displaying stock market movements, add shapes to indicate if it's going up or down. So these are just some really quick tips for adding better accessibility to your site. And really, it's actually not that difficult. And it's actually all these small little um, changes that you can make to your website that really makes a big difference to your users. And you know, accessibility is not just an abstract concept for a gr small group of people that we don't often think about. Disability can be temporary or situational too, just like how I was temporarily blind for one weekend last year. Or maybe you're a mother who's nursing or you're carrying a baby, or you know, maybe you're just carrying a bag of groceries and you're walking home, phone in one hand, and you're trying to do something. Right? Adding better accessibility support helps everyone and not just the permanently disabled. So Microsoft actually has a 
pretty good um, guide on inclusive design, you should actually go check it out. I've included the um, link in my slides. I will be sharing my slides after the talk. And you know, just to underscore that, this ability in whatever form, whether it is permanent or temporary or situational, is more common than you think it is. There's actually two of us who is actually blind in one eye in this room. So here's Kevin and I um, showcasing where our blind eyes are. And I'd like to end by giving a shout out to a very special person, Mr. Yam Tong Wu, who nearly about 10 years ago introduced me to the world of accessible tech and how to use voiceover and in doing so, unknowingly helped me to survive that blind weekend. So Mr. Yam actually is the founder of the Adult Blind Association of Slangor, who basically advocates and helps people who, are, um, who became blind as adults to regain their independence through computers, technology, accessible technology, and the internet. So thank you.